Whoa, Coffee Time friends, how y'all doing? It's Mama and John <laughs> here tonight on a Tuesday night. Did y'all know it was Tuesday? Some of y'all are probably going, Tuesday? Yeah, yesterday was Friday. It was Monday. It was Friday. Uh, and it was uh, New Year's Day. Today we're on Jan 2. <whistles> the year is getting away from us. But the coffee's still good. That's what counts for you, I mean. So, I don't know what day it was we was talking about potato soup. And Mama said today, boy, we sure that some of that potato soup we talked about sure would be good. So, I have peeled and diced all these potatoes up for Mama. And she going to show y'all how to make some good sample potato soup. Now, I may put a little something, something in mine tonight once it's done. Mama, tell them about it. All I'm going to do is put salt in them and cook them. And then when they're done, I'm going to put some cream. I've got to wash this top off when you open it. Evaporated milk. What is and uh, butter. Okay. Evaporated milk. And butter and call it soup. Oh, and then I may have to put a little thick. A little cornstarch. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to some it. And some cold water. Whisk up and thicken that up. I got these uh, oyster crackers out just in case. But they were in there when I got the potatoes. And I thought, I'm going to grab them while I'm in there. There's a potato peel on them. That's what we're doing today. Do what? I thought I got all the potato peel on duck. There's one on the oyster soup and there's one. Oh. I didn't get it cleaned up good, did I? That's okay, Mama. What are y'all having today for this? I guess this could be technically the first... No, I guess this should be the first supper, but... Um, we haven't... Did we cook yesterday? We yeah. had the black peas. We had a whole dinner. We had a whole thing. Fried potatoes. Fried potatoes, so fried potatoes were delicious. We had the black eyed peas and they were delicious. And we had, um, I'm going to have that tonight for supper, that kielbasa. What I should have done was put some tomato juice in that and made kielbasa soup. Maybe that'll be tomorrow. Maybe I'll do that for lunch tomorrow. I'll have kielbasa soup. Mom, there's something on my counter here. Did you steal me? You did steal the, the right. She, was, she didn't put the kit. I just now had this full of... Potatoes and stuff. She fast. She fast. Mom, what are you wearing there? You got your flannel out. Well, it's just a shirt, yeah. It's flannel. Thin. What's these little things right here called? Oh, that's sleeve tabs. You sleeve un tabs? You can unbutton it and let it down and make a long sleeves. Oh, or a scrunchy sleeves. That holds your sleeves up. Yeah. You know, I think it was starch from those potatoes I was filling here because it, it was clean when I sat down here to fill them. But then I felt like, I guess it was the starch. Do y'all like oyster crackers? I buy these things all the time and I keep them and I like them for a snack. I meant to make some of the buttered ones with brown sugar on them. They're totally different than just putting oyster crackers. These are so fresh. Sometimes when you open them, you know, these are just from our store. But I mentioned to a lady at church, we had a soup night when we had some of these. And she brought them and she said, I love them. I started to test the item just for a snack. She said, me too. I just have them around. Don't even have to have soup. And I'll just get a handful and go through the house. I said, that sounds good to me too. Do you see them like that? They're different than a saltine, but they're still just a saltine with a bubble in the middle. Um, some people probably don't even feel with such a mess. This is what mom calls cream. It's evaporated milk. And I'm going to open it with this church key. How do you open your cans? I used to have one side open more, one side just a little hole. My aunt used to open them, what I call backwards. She would take this part, the pointy part, and she would lay it on there, and then she would take her hand and bang it down, and it had a little tiny hole. 
Now, I never did open them that way. That means she probably had a good reason for it. But I never did. Do so y'all open it backwards? And I open it backwards. Hello, John and Mama. Simple and easy. Homemade potato soup. Yeah, that's it. Those crackers are good. They are. With, I'll come back here. With that ranch powder on them. Uh, they're a recipe to bake. Kind of like Chex Mix. Okay. The one I say you use ranch. A little bit of brown sugar. If I'm not mistaken. Ranch and brown sugar. They it caramelizes nice. on them. And then that ranch has got a spice on them. Uh, there's probably two different recipes for them. But I did say you can use the saltine crackers the same way. Potato soup. Uh, we went back and forth tonight. I know y'all probably think that we have some green book that we keep with, with weeks of menus planned out. And all the ingredients are on the shopping list weekly. And we go buy the things and bring them in here. And we have them just so organized. That's even funny to me. We literally, we literally decide a lot of times right before we turn the camera on what we have. We have changed it after we turned it on Tojo. You've been here. So we were discussing back and forth, and Mama was discussing most of it. I was just agreeing either way, because I didn't really care. Mama said, we can do fish sandwiches, and you can make some coleslaw, and I'll work up some tartar sauce. Or we can have potato soup. But she said potato soup first. And I said, boring potato soup, or... But she said, well, we'll just, have, we'll just have fish sandwiches then. And I knew right then, she really wanted potato soup. Didn't you, Mom? Yeah. The kielbasa, cabbage, and peppers and onions kind of worked on me late last night a little bit. We ate early, though. I know it, but it didn't bother me earlier. It, Did you stay up six hours before you went to bed? Oh, sure. Maybe not that long. <laughs> you went to bed late, didn't you? Yeah. And it bothered me, so I thought, well, I don't want no soup off of it like you was wanting <laughs> She was going to go a fish sandwich around. What kind of fish was we going to have? It was some braided fish portions. Oh! The easy way. <laughs> you know, we fix one some. What am I talking? It's easy for me to talk. Um, we fixed some one night and... They were fishy. I just didn't care for them at all. And uh, so we tried a different brand. I'd love to find... A good frozen fish, just for quick and simple, that tastes delicious. You know, you one that... Know some. Give us an idea. Yeah, give us some... Drop us a, a... Drop us some brand. I like to have a good breaded fish that could be used like a fish fillet sandwich or just on a plate with some coleslaw. Because sometimes I just want fish, but I don't want to fool with it. Y'all that way? You know, I just don't want to fool with... Having to batter dip it. Sometimes I want to, but sometimes I just want to come home and it's dark. Especially in the winter, it's dark. And I don't want to fool. And I want to just get to eating and get uh, the dishes cleaned up and then get into a small project or reading or something and then go to bed by 9 o'clock. I mean, we want to eat with y'all, but as far as like the whole evening being tied up with the meal every evening, I don't want that. Sometimes I just want quick and easy, fast and simple. So if I had a good frozen fish, is it Gorton's? We tried something, but we just ain't ever found none that really is like good fish. Either the bread tastes a little weird or the fish is fishy. I don't like fishy fish. You know, Mama's picky on seafood, but she will eat a fish fillet sandwich every once in a while. Or a piece of fish. Or catfish. Catfish. Why don't they have frozen breaded catfish for sale? No, it's too expensive, I guess. Or frozen catfish that I could bread myself because it's just cornmeal that I like to bread it in. A little bit of cornstarch. That's individually sealed. 
Just read it on this thing. I get that bit about me. I don't. Am I talking about you? Yeah, I heard you push for a second. So I got it. No, I was reading. Oh. I thought, boy, he didn't even let me get up from the table. I think somebody's posting links on here. Folks, I'd rather y'all not post any links of any kind on here because we would, if we ever do post a link, we will say uh, what the link is and what's about and all that. Um, so, because of that, I'm just going to go ahead and take this one off. Um, because... Gonna have to do that. Um, don't post links on here. And several of y'all have posted uh, other brands and stuff on our Tupperware links. I'm gonna ban you as soon as I see it, because that's just rude. Um, you may like your brand or whatever your direction, but you don't invade on Smith's page and just start posting links. Uh, in case you didn't know that, that's not acceptable. It's Even if it is acceptable worldwide, it's unacceptable here. So if you post a link, there's a 99.9% .9 chance we're going to ban you. So just know that when you post it. Um, good evening. Well, hello, Rita. How are you? Oh, they do at Walmart. Doris, is that your son to get some fish there? What's the, the title of it? What's... <laughs> John don't know what's wrong with your post. You need to look at comments. Okay, what's going on? I don't know. If something's wrong, I want to know. Um, Carolyn Tolliver, what is going on? Is there something in the post I need to see? I'm like, Mama, I don't like fishy fish. I don't either. Uh -huh. Frozen fish patties or minced fish. I don't like that. Kathy, I think that's the problem. I don't like minced fish. I like whole cut. Real fish. Um, Costco has good fish sticks. The Costco brand, Lynn. I like cod too, Ella. I like cod mm -hmm. and whiting. Flounder. I like flounder and whiting. That's what I like too. Pat, thank you. Van de Kemp's. Vandekamp's beer batter fish fillets. Oh, I'll look for Vandekamp's. Sarah, that's a good one. All right, y'all are helpful. Um, okay, let's go. Thank you for those stars. Gorchin's fish is, is, is all of it. I've had some. Tammy Moore, thank you for those stars. Y'all are so sweet. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. I wore this shirt maybe one last time this year. It was hanging there. I thought, okay, let's get one more good. Mrs. Paul's Fish Fillets. Mommy, you recognize any of those? Mrs. Paul's, I think we might have had. Corey Hawkins says. Battered Cod, Roxanne. Are you talking about making it homemade? I love potato soup. Terry, that I do, too. Fresh Perch in Michigan. Thank you for those stars, Vince. Hello, y'all. Hope you are both doing well. We're doing great. It's been a great year. Exactly. That is disrespectful. Thank you, Jean. We love you both. Thank you, Deborah. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Raymond. Vince, thank you for those stars. That is so sweet. Gorton's con filet or fish sticks are so good. Okay, Lynn. We'll try those. I have tried a few Gorton's products. They seem to be better than some of those others. And I just about, hey, Dewana, thank you for those stars. Um, they seem to be, those are all friends, almost always disappoint. Uh, we bought some fish sticks and we, we literally fed those to uh, Maggie. Um, she could eat white fish. I just peeled the outer bread knife from them, made a little pile of the meat. And she liked them. I added them to her regular food. 
never made how my potato soup. Jane, you've never made how my potato soup? Oh, Jane, this is easy. This is what I thought. Yeah, here's the Gorton's crispy battered fish portions. We like these okay. I think it's the ones we like. I hope it is. So is this what you like? No, we're not sponsored by any And the cod battered, I ain't seen those. No, I haven't either. That's but we these are the flaky, these are kind of deep, freshly mixed, battered, and it's kind of fish portions made from up oh, made from minced fish. Yeah, a lot of these are that I that are that ain't the ones I like. But that looks like real pieces of fish. It looks like it on the box, but if it says minced it ain't. We did try some that was whole fish portions. Enjoy watching you. Well, thank you, Jan. I don't know why we're talking about fish, because we that was our alternative and then we switch back but mama's potato soup is always always good now i make it just like she does even when i'm going to do loaded potato soup and we call that loaded potato soup and mama will a lot of times in the summer she'll ask you know let's have some loaded potato soup and that means fresh green onions out of the garden and it also means uh fresh fried bacon and uh, that kind of, just put it on top, kind of. And you can put a little sour cream, it's a loaded potato. So it's cheese. And then I put a little butter when I fix it, too, when I'm cooking it. You don't put butter in that when you're cooking yeah. it? Yeah. You do? I put butter and cream, salt and pepper. Butter, cream, salt and pepper. How much of all that, Mama? Tell these I folks. I don't know. It's going to have any potatoes. Well, how many are you doing tonight? I probably got like a couple of tablespoons of butter. Two tablespoons. I'm going to tell you how many potatoes I used. Actually, I used three. They were huge. They were big bacon potatoes. So if you were just going to do a pot at home, you might use six potatoes. Six standard size potatoes. Two tablespoons of butter. Just salt, and pepper, salt to and pepper to taste. However you want. And canned evaporated milk, and she's probably going to use about half of that 12 ounce can. How much is that? A 12 ounce can? Yeah. So she'll use about six ounces of cream. And then she'll do another thing to it, and she stirs it. And sometimes those potatoes are going to be starchy enough, and these are Irish potatoes. These are just, what do you call them, Mama? Irish potatoes? Just uh, ru russets. 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 They're not red, and they're not Yukon gold. Red will do a little differently. They're either Idaho's or russets. They're Idaho's or russets. They're just a regular potato. Starchy potato. Um, but anyhow, you do that. You want, let me let me break it down into, I'm going to say five cups of diced potatoes, Mama. Five cups or so. Two tablespoons of butter, salt and pepper to taste, and about seven ounces of of cream and you just let that boil and it'll thicken some because of starches and the potatoes but nine times out of ten you're gonna have to make you a slurry of cornstarch in cold water and then add that in and stir as you go to get the thickness you like mama will show you that right here in a minute potato soup is just like you're gonna make mashed potatoes except just let them boil and then add your uh, stuff to it and thicken them now that is different from stewed potatoes. That's different. Stewed potatoes is just butter, water, salt, and pepper. No cream. When we say stewed potatoes, they're just cooked in butter and water. No evaporated milk. Uh, so that's the difference in stewed potatoes. For us, that's our, our lingo. Uh, that's the difference between stewed potatoes and potato soup is we don't put evaporated milk in it. If you didn't have evaporated milk, you could use whole milk. Wouldn't be quite, but you could definitely use half and half or heavy cream or something like that if you had it. But in there right now, it's just water, salt, and pepper, butter, no, and potatoes. I just got salt, potatoes, and water. Salt and potatoes? Don't you put your pepper and butter in there? No, I put it in when Well, we don't fix it just like Mama. No, we don't. Because I always put my butter, pepper, and salt in there with it and let it cook while it's cooking. But that's me. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what you did. No, I just put salt and potatoes in there. You just make mashed potatoes and add a little something to them.
I like to add, most of the time even when I fix loaded potatoes, I will add a little cheese in them. But most of the time, I put all that stuff on top to make my loaded potato. I love these little oyster crackers. And how they hold the nut, Mama? I think they're ready to put the stuff in. You want to bring it over here and show them? We go over there sometime, but it is, it's hard to film backwards with that stove. Here, they're just cooked. You can see they're... So that's just cooked potatoes. You could mash those and have mashed potatoes. Somebody got a little peel in it. It had to be you, Mama. I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. You can see that the broth is getting. So you can see they're mashable. Mash that down, Mama. See how they'll mash up? That's what you're wanting. So that's just, that is just water, salt, and potatoes. Mm -hmm. And she'll put her pepper in now, and she'll put her butter in now. And then she'll put her cream in. And that cream is warm, chef warm room temperature. You can always put in the microwave a minute if you want to. Not a minute, like 60 seconds, uh, probably. 60 seconds is a I know, but I mean, I don't know that I put my cream in there for a full minute. I pour it up in my cup. Yeah, I, you pour it up in something, of course, but I think I might put it in there for 30 seconds. I, sometimes I say a minute when I mean a short amount of time. So I probably wouldn't do 60 seconds worth I'd probably do 30 and see if it was warm. It, you just want it room temperature. You just don't want to cool your soup down. But you can add cheddar cheese, mixed cheese, Parmesan in it. You can do you know, all that. And then you can add your green onions on top, red onions on top, bacon on top. Or if you want to cook the onions in it, you can start those the same time you start the potatoes. Put your little onion in there. Let it cook. And then when it gets to right now where she said it was ready... Then add your cheese and let that thicken in there. And then add your salt, pepper, and your cream. I add my salt and my pepper first. She's adding her pepper now. And then I add my, add my canned cream in there and let it all come together. And then I put bacon on top, a few fresh green onions. That's loaded potato soup. I never have not enjoyed a bowl of mama's potato soup. And when I get sick, you just really don't want to eat nothing, but you want something, it's good. It's 37 degrees right now, but it feels like 20 something outside. So, soup night. It's a soup night, and Mama. Plus, we have cornbread. You make cornbread, I want my crackers. Mama wants crackers, but we still have cornbread left from yesterday. So, be, why would you waste the opportunity to eat some good cornbread with that potato soup, right? Uh, I always mashed uh, my potatoes for the soup. Some people do. Some people will mash a few of them or put a few instant potatoes in. If you don't have cornstarch, you can add a few instant potato flakes. That'll thicken your soup. I'd add a little instant mash. <laughs> Kathy! We're thinking kind of like. You can add a little bit of instant mashed potatoes to it, but Kathy, I really don't think we even own any instant mashed potatoes. If we did, I'd be afraid to use them. Uh, hey, John and Mama, we did poke bags for our church this year. They were a hit. Have you never done them before, Cherry? They are a hit every year, no matter how old, how young. Uh, the kids love them, even though they have gadgets and electronics they like that bag of fruit and juicy fruit candy and it was funny i was hearing the little girls talking at church and that we had double mint and juicy fruit and the one little girl said i'll trade you the green for the yacht i don't do the green and the other girl said i don't care so they switched i was like how sweet they switched the green for the yacht she didn't like the yacht she didn't like the green uh and it, it was just funny. It was cute to watch. It was, it was good on a cold day. Martha Eddie is. My mom always made potato soup when we were sick. Tammy, it's a staple. It's like chicken noodle soup. Um, you want to have some good soup. 
Uh, add ham. You mean ham cubes to your potato soup? You could if you want to do ham and potato soup. We have um, stewed potatoes and ham, but no milk in it. It's just butter, water, and the potato. I know this is all crazy, but the potatoes are usually sliced on wedges for it, not in dices. I've never had it diced. Uh, I've always had it in wedges. Just take a round potato and just eat it. Uh, and that's how we do our stewed potatoes. Because it's just water, butter, salt, pepper. And then we put a little ham in it. Or sometimes we'll just have stewed potatoes. And then it's good with cornbread too. Because you get all that pot liquor or that juice inside there. It's so good. So. You can do both those that way. And they're so good. Stewed potatoes are wonderful. We have it with ham a lot of times, don't we, Mama? Yeah. We had boiling beef. And just cooked potatoes in it. And Not long ago, we had boiling beef and, and potatoes here. Yeah. I like all the stuff your name in mine. I do too, Francis. I like it good and hearty, but I also like just plain old potato soup. It's really cold here. Got snow on the mountain. Becky, there's a terrible, terrible rumor going around town that we're getting snow possibly Saturday. Maybe a little Friday. I'm not sure. Uh, but we've got a front of some kind coming down in Kentucky. And it may hit down in Tennessee. You know how they like to tease you with two modules. Module one says it'll hit in there for Kentucky, but we have another module here that says it'll come down into northeastern Tennessee. We live at the break line of a lot of situations here in northeast Tennessee. A lot of times in northeast Tennessee, even the southern part of our county won't get what we get because we are dead on the line. So usually we go with Kentucky forecast because usually what they say Kentucky's going to get is what That's we get. I, like I it. think it's plenty thick, Mama. I don't like it real thick. So you didn't put any? Yeah, I put just a, about not even a tablespoon of cornstarch. So she put a tablespoon of cornstarch in cold water. Don't put cornstarch in your soup. Let me repeat that. Don't ever add dry cornstarch in your soup. And don't mix cornstarch with hot water. It'll, it will, as they say, not up or... Clump up, whatever you want to call it, but it's not good. Cold water and cornstarch, and then pour it slowly into your soup, stirring while you do it, and you can feel it thick. have it boiling, too. It has to be boiling. I know, a lot of instructions there. Cold water in the cornstarch and a cup, but then put your into boiling, and that keeps it from lumping up. See how smooth that is? And that's the perfect thickness for a good bowl of soup. Now I'm going to go ahead and dip out some here because, as you can tell, it's boiling. So we like to usually ladle this up a little bit and then let that be cooling. We'll enjoy it and then we'll ladle up a little bit more. Well, you're talking about snow. Oh, Mama, are you what trying you to influence drink? the weather? I've got coffee, Mama. I think I'm going to drink tea. You want some tea, too? Um, I guess, but are you sure it's decaffeinated? Yeah. I drank that tea on New Year's Eve. And I was up. And I'm never up like that. Not with my conscience. It was as clear as I could be. But I woke up at 11 something and didn't go back to bed to two something. Just ordered to sleep. I blamed the tea. Mama says it's to caffeinate. We'll find out tonight's test. If I drink it tonight and I'm up, I'm going to declare. It was in the yellow thing bag that said decaffeinated. I'm going to swear and declare it wasn't decaffeinated. Look at Mama's y'all picture. Y'all decaf tea. Hmm? Whoa. Your fat made them fall in the soup. 
you know, just that. That is a testament to quick reflex. Did you see that? I would have been embarrassed if y'all went in for a tater soup dip. What are y'all eating this second day of the year? Happy New Year from Patty says Happy New Year from Florida. Where are you from, Patty? What is that word? W I M A U M A. I'm afraid to even try it. I make you mashed potatoes, family size bag of Lay's potato chips. It's delicious with a little creamy salt and pepper. I have potato chips. Now, wait, wait. Linda, are you making mashed potatoes? I'm making mashed potatoes with a family sized bag of Lay's potato chips. It's delicious with a little cream, salt, and pepper. With a little creamy salt and pepper butter. So try it. Wonderful. Never heard Linda, you're making mashed potatoes out of potato chips. Do you drain the water off? No, no, ma'am. We don't drain the water off the potatoes. That water that we start out with is right in there. That starch helps to thicken it. Now, I will drain potatoes sometimes when I'm making vegetable soup and rinse them. But most of the time, we just let the water cook down low. And like even mashed potatoes when we have them on Sunday or whenever, we cook them and we let, we try to use that water. Well, we drain off the mashed potatoes. A little. But yeah, sometimes we leave a little. A little water. Hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful meal. We thank you for these precious hands that prepared it to go when it's asked for the nourishment of our bodies with it. Dear Lord, it's asked you to be with each and every person gathered here and be with every prayer request. Dear Lord, those spoken and unspoken. In your precious name we pray and I'll ask all these things in your name. We pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Alright, Mama. I put that up for about a minute ago. So it should be cooling. Of course, I'm grabbing the pepper. I put a lot of pepper in You did good. You did good. You, did good. So you, you know me, I'm always going to add another pepper flake or two. You want some of these? No, I got regular. You got regular. make a couple of salt. I don't think I've got hardly enough salt there. We'll see. We'll see. We don't need much salt. I probably got it too salty now. I don't need no salt on mine. You're a better person than me. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Mom, this is delicious. Yeah. Mmm. Potato, salt, pepper, butter, thickening. That's it. Plain old taters. I love my taters. Potato soup. This is probably better than a fish sandwich, Mama. Yeah. Especially mint fish. Yeah. Uh, mommy always made us potato soup when we was we felt the least bit bad. We did not did Mama and Papa make it the same? No. If Daddy made it, he put onions in it. And Sonny made it, he put onions in it. That's me. There we are. There's where I get it from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all sweet tea. But Mommy always just kind of plain. Because if you're sick, you don't want all that in it. That's when they tell you bland food. Bland ain't always bad, though. Mm-mm. This is tasting pretty good, Mama. Seven o'clock here in at 30 degrees, 36 degrees. That uh, onions and stuff might have been good for a cold if you had an upset stomach. Or I mean, for that. taste. Yeah. It does taste good in there. But if they bother your stomach, it ain't good. Mm -mm. You know, a little more, Mama? Yeah. Somebody got a day out too much salt in it. <laughs> That's good. Now, did you notice I give her juice? That's what we like. So we don't put too much thickening in it. 
We like the juice, don't we, Mama? Yeah. I like soupy soup. <laughs> we like soupy soup of any kind. Pinto we like beans. soupy pinto beans. And your daddy was the direct opposite. He liked everything. Dry. And he would put so many crackers in his chili, you could eat with a fork. I like my chili then, too. And I really don't have to have crackers with chili. I'll eat it sometime, but most of the time I just like the soup. Mm -mm -mm. I would eat these oyster crackers and chili. We don't drain the potatoes. How's the dog? Mm -hmm. Mary, she's doing good. She's sweet as she can be. But every day, she packs her bed around. <laughs> and She's moving all the time. She don't chew it up. She just wants to lay on it. I call her Linus because she takes her blanket everywhere she goes. And if, if you go get it once a day, you're going to go get it again before bed, no matter how many times you get it. But now at that time, she settled. It's in her bed, and she settled. She won't come in at all now. I mean, I've coaxed her in, I've tried, and she just stands there and rope, wag, wags her whole body. I don't know what it is. She's not outside dog. She just don't like, <clears throat> like the insides. Nope. I thought if I got her in here enough, I could sway Mama over, <laughs> but neither one of them want to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> She's a uh, a chewer. I don't know if I want her in here. She wouldn't chew furniture, though. She just... I think she's a lonely chewer. A lonely chewer. When she didn't get into this, she'll sit around and chew on something. I wouldn't have no scum. Plus, did Maggie for laying on my tree skirts and making her bed on them. This one, I think, would eat them or chew them, track, drag them all over the house. She might pick the tree up and bring the whole tree to you. <laughs> yeah, that's She's strong. She's so strong, but she's lovable. She definitely ain't been in the house to take care of nothing. She don't like it either. And I'm not surprised. I, like I said, our dog named Rusty, we used to have was about like her. I would beg him to stay in. And I would get him situated in the room. And I always put him right in my bed. I'd have him situated with a big old pillow, a blanket. <laughs> And think and they're feeding good. He'd lay down. He'd be perfect. In thirty minutes, you'd hear him whining, and he'd go to the door, and he would not leave the door. You open the door and let him out. I remember one night, there was eight inches of snow on, and it was in the twins. And I said, "You're staying in tonight, boy." I put my foot down. I said, you're staying in tonight. You can't be out there. Mm -mm. He came in. He ate. He drank what he wanted. He laid in the bed. Lights out. <laughs> to the door. Stood, and he wouldn't come back. It was as he stood at the door. And I'm like, Rusty, you don't understand. It's cold. So I thought, okay, we'll see. So I opened the door. He ran out in the snow. Played and had a good time. Played and had a good time. <laughs> I gave him about five minutes. I thought maybe he just has to go potty. He did all his business he needed to do. He came back, laid on the porch, and I said, Now come in, get in here and go to bed. Have nothing of it. Nothing of it. So there are certain dogs that just don't like it. Um, she came in 
When the guy brought her to us, though, he said she won't eat for us. And um, so I started feeding her pepperonis. Well, she ate those. So she stayed in for those. But I think what happened, I told Mama earlier, I was feeding her pepperonis in the house only, you know, just bringing her in and feeding her pepperonis. And then, yesterday, day before yesterday, I went out and was sitting on the porch, and of course I had to. Hello. So I started getting her pepperonis out there. And then, today I fed her some pepperonis. So she says, I don't have to go in. So now them. she's like, I can get them out here. I don't have to go in there. I think the only reason she was coming in was for the pepperonis. The first two days I had her, I fixed her a bed on the back porch. I thought that might be, it's all covered and it's got banisters around all of them. So, you know, it's both the porches is about the same. Probably the front porch is warmer maybe for her because it's, that's the west side of the house and the front's on the east side of the house. So maybe that's, she's smarter than me. But anyhow, I was, <laughs> she would be on the back and I would feed her, put her in her bed, get her tucked in. And when I'd come in, I'd hear at the front door. And so I'd let her in, feed her some pepperonis, and then I'd put her out the back door. And she'd go down and get in her bed. So that was our little routine for two or three days. And she was fine walking through the house. And she's, she steps a little high. <laughs> but she would stop here, and I'd sit here, and I'd feed her her pepperonis. And, you know, we would talk a while and enjoy the evening. And then I'd walk her out the back door. And she was okay with it. Now... Nothing happened. She got, she's got her way. She goes around both sides. She ain't, she ain't feeling with us. Now, she's right there. Even as young as she is, and she don't roam. I've never gone out to check on her or anything that she didn't come running right to us. You know, she's just right here in the yard. But uh, I don't think we're going to ever civilize her. Be like putting shoes on Ellie Mae Clampett. I don't think we're ever going <laughs> to. She or she is. <laughs> Not much. I don't have any hopes of getting her in permanently. No, she ain't. I just want her in when it's cold. Yeah, but dogs are, if they're at, used to outside, some of them love the snow. Mm -hmm. She does have a nice, thick coat of hair. Um, and I'm sure she's warmer than I think she is, but she's not out in the weather, and she is on the porches, and that's that's fine. Now she goes out on the back porch during the day, just to kind of lounge around. But at night, even without her bed, the other night she went to sleep in here, and I had to go get her bed and bring it to her. Did you get her bed out of the yard? I sure, Mom. I took her in. <laughs> I took that girl in. She don't know where she wants her bed. Either. She does. Wherever right she's right. at. Wherever she's at, it's where she wants that bed. I think the bed reminds her of warmth or something. I don't know. Maybe she needs the bed when she's laid out in the sun. i never seen a dog that wouldn't lay in a soft bed and go out there and lay on them rocks. Yeah, now she has got, we put rocks in the rock in the fire beds. You know, we had all that trouble with that pea vine. And my roses. So I had all those transferred. Transplanted. The rose bed used to be up front. Now it's at the side. And I like to mix in roses and hydrangeas. And do this whole end in roses and hydrangeas. Because that doesn't get to be pretty. My granny had hydrangeas here. And that's kind of where I'm going to go with. But. Um, so we had this rock put in there. So you can just spray it. We aren't going to try to battle pea vine anymore. Because we battled it for 25 years. And it has won every year. And uh, we've even took dirt out and put new dirt in. I've done mulch. I've done that plastic. You name it, we've done it. At one time, I took the, uh, the old plastic we had down. And I put newspaper, wet newspaper. And then I covered that with cardboard. Then plastic. Wet cardboard. And then a plastic. And then mulch. I knew there wasn't no pea vine coming through there. It did. It did. 
I believe he could live on the rock. It wasn't that bad that year. It wasn't as bad. But it was still a weekly occurrence of having to go up there and pull it all up. The next year, it was like, come on, we've got to fight for our right <laughs> to smother these roses. Anyway, it was just a nightmare. So I was talking to a guy and he said, the only way you get rid of it is concrete over it. I said, I said, we'll do it. So they poured concrete and they put rock and they swear that nothing can grow through it at all. But anyway, the rocks in there are big and she loves to lay on them. I told Mama, I said, Mama, people pay big money for hot rock massages. And I bet those rocks get hot during the day when the sun's shining on them. I bet she likes just to lay you on them. You ain't been hot enough to get hot rocks. Maybe these are hers. She likes it. She loves it. You want some more? Uh-uh, no. I'll feed you that whole kettle. I don't think so. Anyhow, that's it. So that's the Abby update. That's the Abby update. Who knows? There might be a... I need these smells out there somewhere someday that would come and when, when the time was just right. But I don't know if I'm ready for that. No. Abby's her own little person, her own little fur baby. And she's feeling, she's feeling an empty spot. But she's not taking the place of Maggie. Um... I don't think, it's just like, you know, when you have anything in your life that matters to you, you may have something else that matters to you, but nothing ever takes the spot of, you know, and Maggie didn't take the place of Sierra. It was six years later we got Maggie, or seven, maybe. Yeah, about seven. And uh, Maggie was nothing like Sierra, and we talked of Sierra often. Uh, with Maggie and done comparisons and everything, but even though they looked a lot alike, uh, they never did. You know, that was they both had their own place. And we had Rusty. We loved Rusty. He was an all outside dog. He was the other one. Uh, and we had him for years and years. Rusty, the church dog. And um, I miss Rusty to this day. And I'll see a dog and I'll say, "Oh, that looks like our little Rusty." And Abby reminds me a lot of Rusty. A lot. They don't, don't look nothing like him. They don't look alike, but they act alike. Rusty left him with old kids. Pull her ears, her eyelashes. <laughs> he <laughs> would do anything. <laughs> let them kids do anything to him. He was the best dog, too. Abby's so gentle and sweet. I think she would, I don't think she would uh, hurt a kid. But now one thing, she's a good guard dog. She lets you know when somebody or anything is out there. And I'm even already learning her barks. Like, I'll hear a bark and I think, hmm, that's an animal. She's got a little different bark. And if it's a person, she lets you know. Yeah. Um, even Mama's learning the other day. She said, that's somebody. And went out there and there was somebody out there to see Mama. So, it's like bringing eggs, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, that's the way you love your fur babies. All right, folks, that's all we got tonight. Some good old potato soup, a little chat about Abby, and um, it's Tuesday. It'll be Friday for you, blink your eyes. In just a blink of an eye, Mama, it'll be Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the new year. I always do. I always enjoy. I like January for a minute, but January <laughs> is the longest month. So, But I don't think it's going to be that long this month. I think I've got plenty to do, keeping my mind going. Uh, I think January is going to be pretty quick like the rest of them. I, you know, October, I don't even remember October. It was just a blur. Psh, October gone, because I had plans. Uh, there's a place not far from here. It's a pumpkin festival. It's about an hour and a half from here. Mama likes to go there just to look around. They have huge, huge pumpkins. And we plan on going there, and something happened that weekend. We didn't do one pumpkin festival. We usually buy one, two, three, four, five mums for the pots out front, and then we'll buy a few to set around. Just because we love the mums, bought one mum from one child that was selling for school. So we really, we didn't go look at mums. 
No. We didn't do nothing normal. No, we didn't. Had doctor's appointments. I went to a lot of You did a lot of doctor's appointments that night. But we sort of just let the whole fall season. Why, no. Mama did put a few wreaths up. You know, and put some pumpkins, fake pumpkins out. But she didn't get all her fake pumpkins out. Oh, no. And we had a pumpkin. Some kind of flag you had up there. Yeah, fake pumpkins on it. But as far as getting into it, like we know, we didn't have one bonfire. Welcome to fall, and it was covered in bright orange pumpkins and something else. Was and really we didn't have one bonfire. We always do a bonfire two or four, eight in the fall because it was so much fun. It's not too cold. Mama can sit out there. We just skipped it. Thanksgiving, it came and went. Christmas, Mama put up all the trees. But out of all the tree putting up, we can get one on over here. This one. Oh, There's only been about three nights that I got to just sit and enjoy them. And uh, just, I just love to take them in. I just love to sit where I can see them and drink hot chocolate or a Russian tea or something and just be quiet. Maybe have music a little bit playing. Just something to let your mind be relieved a little bit of everything. And uh, I'm not even done that that much this year. But they're still up. They're not going to be long. I'm going to start taking them. Mama's tired of them. And I started leaving them up for another week. No, I'm not leaving them up that I may leave one up, she said. Uh, it's just bearing on me that I've got to get them took down and put up. You know, that feeling. Mm -hmm. I've got to get it accomplished. Yeah. It'll take a while, a day or two to get them. Back. Yeah, it doesn't take as long to take them down as it does for her to put them up. But I've already heard her talking about next year. I'm gonna do this, and we'll put the. You know, she's oh, got her plan. Next year. She's got her plan set in stone for next year. Mm -hmm. Mommy, got anything else? No. I tell you what, she's got on her mind, and I'm not even talked to her about it. I already know. Oh, let's see if you know my mind. I know your mind, Mama. Well, let's see. So you want to get all the Christmas stuff down. You want to clean the house again. Yeah. Because you had to clean the house to put them up. Oh, yeah. But now you're going to take them all down. You're going to clean again. Well, those needles fall off and stuff falls off. And... But we're going to be cleaning places that trees weren't even at. Oh, well, yeah. you clean a room, you got to clean the whole room. <laughs> I know. And then she's going to be thinking about garden. Getting her seeds, getting her stuff, get her some lettuce seed, get some green onion seeds. Right, Mom? Yeah, it won't be long until it'll be time for lettuce and onions. It's January 2nd. But she'll have them planted by the end of next month. But now, theoretically, our Februarys are nice uh, in, in here. We have, we Februarys are unpredictable, you know. But our Februarys, and I don't have any re any reason for knowing what causes it, but usually the third week of February, and sometimes the, the last week of February, is warmer, nicer, sunnier, prettier than March. March is a weird month here. We can have snow in March. We had a huge snow in April one time, April 3rd, I believe it was. But my birthday is March 29th. And it'll be cold and snowy, maybe. My first cousin's birthday is February the 18th. 18th. And we used to play outside of her birthday and have all kinds of fun. And I think, oh, my birthday. And then you come to my birthday, it'd be cold and rainy. Or it would be, depending on how March came she in. She said it's pretty on count of her birthday. She always got pretty for that. <laughs> but we always have about the third week of March or February. It's a nice week. And it's springy. And stuff starts popping out that shouldn't be popping out. Like uh, red buds and dogwoods and things that shouldn't be blooming, they'll start. And normally, by the end of February, we have um, Easter lilies popping up and crocuses. And so we don't have that much longer to go this spring. Five weeks. Then we'll have a freeze spell. And then yeah. it'll nip back stuff and then we'll have to start all over. But trees will start putting out and it goes fast. And a lot of times here we don't have, I call it 10 minutes of spring. Because you'll go from cold, frost, winter weather, to you'll have a week of pretty spring 
or two, and then it's hot. You think it's hot. It's 80 something degrees a lot of times in early spring here. <laughs> yeah, it gets hot. I like that nice spring days. But we'll take what we get and we That's don't complain right. and we like it all. I, I wouldn't even mind to see a good it. snow. I'm wondering if Abby would come in if it snowed. Probably not. What dog do we have that yet loves the snow? I'll tell you, the dog that we couldn't hardly keep in when it snowed was Maggie. She liked snow. She hated rain, but loved snow. She'd run in out the door every chance she'd get to get out there to snow. Yeah. And she'd come in and her little piles would have snowballs on them. And you know, I said, Maggie, I wouldn't let her sit there long, but she'd stay out there all that day if you let her. Love the snow, didn't you? Yeah, a drop of rain and she'll oh, knock the door down. Yeah, <laughs> or thunder or any, oh. But some snow, she's like a kid on school out day. That's why I love <laughs> Mom's that way too. Mama loves a good snow day. I said, school's out today. Mama still gets excited when they call school off. There's no school today, she'll say. Mm -hmm. so you, you've been retired, what, eight years? Since 15. That's almost nine years. It nine be years. She's been so. retired nine years. She was a school cafeteria manager. Done fed kids for years and years and years. And now... Nine years later, she's still excited when they call school. <laughs> Mama, it's supposed to snow Saturday. You think you'll... Oh, I just decided for the kids. That was a good time oh, when you got snow. I see that glimmer in your eye yeah. and that smile on your face when you hear it. I went so early, I have to go and be in the snow trying to get home. She loves to get the fireplace going. Stand in front of it. And rock back and forth and watch it snow. I stood out there today. I know, I saw it. Wasn't, it wasn't snowing. And she'll say, Ooh, it's getting hot. And I said, Well, you're standing inside the fireplace. Get out of there. <laughs> That's another thing. Maggie would crawl right up oh in my it gosh. if you had it on. Maggie, we had them little space heaters that has a flame. But the real heat's at the bottom. They look like a flame. Dura flame, I think is what they're called. And she would lay with her face and it would be blowing her hair. And she'd lay there. It's as close as she could get. And the fireplace, the same way. She'd lay right over on it. And if the pilot light's on, she'd lay at the pilot light. She could feel a little bit of warmth. And she wouldn't go out with a sweater on. You had to put a sweater on her and take her out. You know, I've got some of Maggie's sweaters. You reckon I should put one on Abby? <laughs> I can see her chin it off the first time. <laughs> she had have it tore off from her 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I put one on her what she'd do. She gets down in cold, you might have to put one on her. If it gets cold, she won't come in. She'll be wearing one. I don't care what she does to it. <laughs> and I'll, there's a plug in. I think I got my mind made up. The only thing that worries me about her is she, she still chews a little bit. A lot. She chews a lot. <laughs> but I thought I will put her bed out there and plug the heating pad up. Too and dangerous. I'll unplug it. I'll, but I'll get it good and warm for her to start with. Mm. I'll be putting a hot water bottle out there with her. Or I might be sitting out there with her, holding her. I'm not going out there to hold her. I might be able to persuade her to come in by then, before we get really cold. I just don't, I don't want her to come in all the time. I'm fine with that. I just want her to come in when I want her to, so I feel better about it, and I know where she is, and I know she's warm. She can go out. But at night, when it gets down to cold, cold, she's coming in somewhere. Maybe it won't be that cold. But if we are, Mama. 21, so we've been down in the upper teens. I may have to make me a pepperoni necklace. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and lure her in here. Are y'all crazy? Y'all do that with yours. If he's got any good ideas of how to get a, a, a strong-willed dog who don't want to come in, in, let me know. To stay. She'll come in a little bit. Now, she can come in in two days. Will not come in. I hold the door open. I say, come on, come on. Get in here. Come on. She'll just stand there. Her whole body shakes. Her tail, her head. <laughs> All right, Mama, you say good night. Good night. You popped her off. I know, Mama. Or let yourself. The internet's messing up. I love talking with them. <laughs> and I love talking about our fur baby. So. Yeah. Or our... She's not ours yet. We're going to give it a, you know. You all know. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Good night, y'all. Have a great night. Bye-bye.